Hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more Great Ace Attorney. Let's go, let's finish case three. This was the case about the old dude who died in a carriage. What the witnesses really saw, and like, people keep lying to me, so... Eh. Um, we gotta get their updated testimony to see what really happened. There was blood on both hands of the assailant. I sincerely and distinctly remember that. Let's just press everything. Because I don't know what new information I'm going to get. No, the evidence tells us otherwise. We have the gloves that the defendant was wearing on the night in question in the court record. I'm well aware of that, sir. But nevertheless, I know what I saw and I stand by it. The man had blood on both his hands. He's defiant even in the face of hard evidence. He's steadfastly refusing to admit that he might be mistaken about what he saw, but why? Your reasoning is dire. Huh? One hand or two, the salient point remains unchanged. Minutes after a grim crime, the victim's blood dripped guiltily from the accused fingers. Oh, oh, oh. Hmm. Although I suppose it is see it, right? Don't try to downplay this. Whether or not you saw the exact moment of the crime is a matter of fundamental importance, as well you know. Oh, boy! For crying out loud, we all know that no one else could possibly have done it. I was just uh, trying to save us all some time. Time on what? Oh, to get this trial over quickly. You have a loan of 20 guineas outstanding with the defendant, do you not? <clears throat> How do you hope to release yourself from that financial burden by ensuring the defendant was found guilty? I will... Uh, that's not entirely... Not what I was hoping for. Uh, Oh, I'm just a little giddy or, or ten when I backed the wrong horse in the derby, that's all. Uh, I was going to win it all back. There's a fixture this weekend, that's a sure thing. <sighs> a little guinea or ten? I'm a banker. No one bets an eye if I borrow a little spending money for the weekend. But they'll notice if you don't replace it. I think you may have revealed rather more about your character than you bargained for, sir. This witness's scruples are not on trial here. Proceed to the next witness. Is, is that really how it's supposed to work? Yeah, true. I mean, just because he's a scumbag, he's not on trial. I don't remember his voice. I don't remember a lot of the voices I made for the characters, but let's just go. I remember seeing knife, and I remember seeing both of the attacker's hands with blood on them. Oops. Oh, go back, go back, go back, go back. You know what I mean? I need to press on this. You definitely saw that too? Blood on both hands? Yes, sir. I mean, I, I know what you're going to say. Only one of Mr. McGilder's gloves has any signs of blood on it. That's right. The thing is, as far as I remember, sir, when I looked down and saw Mr. McGilder sitting beside the other fellow, I don't believe he was wearing any gloves, sir. He wasn't wearing these gloves? That's correct, sir. I saw the blood on both his bare hands quite clearly. It's true that the dark colored stain on the dark leather gloves wouldn't have been easy to see. I should point out that the police officer who apprehended the accused on that night in question reported that there were no trace of blood on Mr. McGilden's gloved hands. There wasn't blood on his hands. Hmm, this is puzzling indeed. This must be significant somehow, I'm sure of it. Yeah, it means someone else killed him, duh. I, I didn't actually see anything myself, no. Not until I heard that scream. You didn't see anything? Oh, yes, sir. That is to say, no, sir, I did it. Very sorry about what I said before, sir. Very sorry, yes. It, it was very wrong of me to make up stories and to say I saw him stab the man. Wouldn't you agree, sir? Hmm. I know what you're insinuating, but I certainly wasn't making up stories. Still, to say you saw nothing isn't right either, is it? No, sir. I saw nothing at all. Mr. Beppo, you were driving your horses. At the very least, you, um, you must have enjoyed a good view of London streets, no? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, please. You didn't even see that. It, it was so c cold that night, you see. It was all I c could do to keep, keep from passing out, sir. 
Yes, my head was fairly frozen solid. Sorry to say, sir. It would seem prudent to avoid travel on the last omnibus service of London's cold winter nights. Oh, oh, oh. The ball! <laughs> ah! Anyway, in fact, man's blah, 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 blah. And everything you saw in the incident was through the skylight on the roof of the omnibus? That's right. I was, it was fiercely cold that night, but the glass wasn't frosted over. Oh, yes. I remember I was shivering. It was so bitter. Which rather begs the question of why the pair of you were sitting on the roof deck in the first place. Well, I don't know about this, young fellow, but I couldn't enter the cabin. Oh, why not? It was locked from the inside. I tried knocking, but no one opened the door. It was locked? That's right, and it's public bus service for pity's sake. That's not what I call fair play. Yes, I had exactly the same experience. I tried knocking, but the jet inside just gestured at me to clear off. So I had no choice but to climb up to the roof deck and look down longingly into the warm cabin below. Well, I can assure you I wasn't just looking down. I was glaring long and hard. That's what she said. And that's precisely why I can tell you with absolute confidence that if there was anyone else at all in that cabin, I would have noticed. Unequivocal, I would say. Oh, oh, oh. I'm not sure about these two witnesses. Could they really have seen everything inside the cabin through the skylight? They might not have been able to. Allow me to confirm one thing, Mr. Fairplay. You were riding this omnibus. And what is these events in the cabin through the skylight in the floor of the upper deck? Is that right? That's right, yes. In that case, there is a portion of the cabin interior that would have been out of sight from you. What? Boy, golly, really? Obviously, at this stage, we can't say for sure. But the possibility cannot be denied that at the time of the incident, there could have been another passenger in the enclosed cabin of the omnibus. Enough hypothetical meandering, my Nipponese friend. The prosecution demands that you substantiate your claims. After all, the scene of the crime is here in the flesh. Very well, I will uphold the prosecution's demand. You will identify the area on this cross-sectional plan of the omnibus. Where exactly in the omnibus are you suggesting that this potential extra passenger could have been situated? Here, boom! Both rows of the seats on the roof face in the direction of travel. Whereas the seats in the enclosed cabin face each other. Which means... The visible part of the cabin which passengers on the roof deck can see their sc uh... This part of the cabin which passengers on the roof that can see through the skylight is as I've, I, is as I've drawn here. I can speak. Ah! Oh. That's right, my lord. As you can see, the seat opposite the one on um, which the victim and his attacker were sitting is obscured from view. In other words, if someone had been sitting on that seat, it's quite possible that these witnesses would have been completely unaware of it. Gar! It's quite possible some phantom was sitting there. You Nipponese have a forbidding habit of obscuring the truth with ambiguity. Hey Kirby, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. Thank you for the cat. <laughs> how far did you get in this game? I concur with the prosecution's rejoinder. In a British court of law, evidence is paramount. I cannot entertain this conjecture counsel. That is, unless you're able to put a name to this mysterious passenger to whom you allude. Oh, shoot. I don't know the name. Starting 1-5. Nice! You're so far! Can you, Mr. Naruhodo? I honestly don't know. Who could it have been? Who could have been in the other seat, which was out of sight from the witnesses on the roof deck? Mm. Not him. Not him. He was sitting right next to him. Not you. <sighs> You're the one who died. You were driving. You guys were on top, so... I honestly have no idea, so good thing I saved. 
Ugh, I have literally no idea. But as a proud citizen of the Japanese Empire, you will look to the sky and walk on, making sure all signs of tears are gone. Go on. This isn't just a case of going on, Miss Susato. Alright then, I'll, I'll go on. The defense would like to put forward a name. You are a fool. That response was a desperate attempt by a man who has no notion of his limitations. A toast to hard lessons not yet learned. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Let us not delay, Council. The defense is still to name the passenger in the other seat. This could be it. This could be the chance that I've been waiting for to turn the trial in my favor. On that night, on the night of the murder, the person occupying the seat in the omnibus cabin that was obscured from the view was... I mean, the only possible person I could think it was is... is this dude. Even though he says he's a driver, like it could have been someone else driving the carriage. Like these two were clearly on the roof. Right? And he's the one that died. <sighs> because it's like, hey, you saw the London streets and he was quiet. Okay. Gonna save again. My guess it's either him or... No, but he said that it was locked and he confirmed, so... This is the only person. Oh, that is so wrong. Uh... Oops, I forgot to read it. Uh, Concealed in the blind spot of the cabin that night was nothing other than this unexpected passenger. Whatever your so-called whatsoever whatever so-called logic you use to arrive at that conclusion, it matters not. Because your answer has made one thing abundantly clear. The real blind spot is inside your head, and it would appear to be unusually large. Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh, uh, could have just said that's not right. Mr. Naruhoro, our task here is to defend Mr. McGilded, and we are working on the assumption that he is innocent of this crime. Um, yes, of course. Why? That must mean, then, that there was someone else inside the omnibus with Mr. McGilded, the true culprit. That's right, exactly what I've been- Oh, of course, so the two people sitting inside the cabin the, that the witnesses saw through the skylight that night. They were the victim and the real culprits. It does seem as though we've all been making a false assumption. The witnesses weren't looking at Mr. McGilded at all, meaning he has to have been sitting somewhere else. Let us not delay, Counselor. The defense is still to name the passenger in the other seat. This could be it. This could be the chance that I've been waiting to turn the trial in my favor. On that night, on the night of the murder... <sighs> I mean, this guy? It can't be this guy. Right? Because he'd be like, yo, you're freaking ridiculous. But it's not him. I feel like he was... Okay, so my guess was that... Beppo was hiding in the seat, and then he just like popped out and like killed the dude, and then in the confusion he's like, Oh, let me open the door! And he'd already be there. Um, so then the only other possible person can be... Male Strongheart. Because he's the only other fancy one. Nope, so wrong. So wrong. Oh my gosh, who is it? Oh! Oh! Obscured from I read it wrong! Oh my gosh, it's, it's the person obscured from view. So it's him. The gilded was the one sitting in the other seat, and then the real killer- I misunder- I misread it. The passenger in the enclosed cabin that the witnesses on the roof deck failed to see has to have been Mr. Magnus McGilded. But Mr. McGilded? What are you talking about, Counsel? That's the name of the defendant! Oh! 
If I desecrate this chamber by smashing my hollow chalice, do forgive the discourtesy. Lord Van Zeeks. People talk of those tiny island nations in the Far East as having a learning and culture of their own. But I see they use terms ill-advisedly. What are you trying to say? Let me explain in terms that even a student of the artless backwater such as yourself might understand. When the bloody scene unfolded, the victim and his assailant were sitting side by side. Multiple witnesses have attested to the fact it's the very premise on which this case is built. But that premise may be wrong. What? If the victim really was sitting beside Mr. McGilded, it creates an inconsistency that can't be reconciled in any way. What inconsistency, Council? The defendant's gloves, my lord. Both witnesses made the same testimony. They claimed that there was blood on both hands of the person sitting next to the victim. Yet we know the truth to be otherwise. Only one glove bears the gory remains. The point is, even in the face of this irrefutable evidence, both witnesses have maintained their stance. Yes, the testimony remains unchanged. Exactly. They both adamantly swear that they clearly remember seeing blood on both hands of the assailants. In short, their memory of events co is correct and their testimony reveals the truth. Hmm. It was somebody else sitting beside the victim that night, a third party we have yet to identify. And the victim's blood on that passenger's was on that passenger's hands, both of them. And who was this third party? Obviously, the true culprit. E Extraordinary! Who's <laughs> party toes? Party party party. Order! Order! What exactly are you postulating? The defense's postulation is just that, nothing more than conjecture. The witnesses have clearly stated that they saw the accused. But when elaborating on his, on his testimony, Mr. Fairplay said the two of them were wearing hats and I couldn't exactly make out their faces. Hmm, yes. The tops of their heads were obscured by the roof. I could see the rest of them though. Yes, that's right. Both gents were both certainly hatted. Hunters do tend to notice such things, sir. And um, what particular styles of hat did the two gentlemen sport, Mr. First? I'm afraid I don't remember. And you call yourself a hatter? The style of the hat makes no difference. Oops, this is Van Zeeks. The style of hat makes no difference. There was no third passenger in that cabin. How can you be sure? Because if there had been, the accused Mr. McGilded would undoubtedly have offered to dispose of, dispose of facts. Unless, that is, you are proposing an even more preposterous explanation. That the accused failed to even notice the presence of the true culprit in the very cabin in which he traveled. Ah. He's right. If there was another person traveling in the enclosed cabin of the omnibus, it's inconceivable that Mr. McGilded would have been unaware of it. Order! There is clearly a simple solution to this problem. Bring the accused Mr. McGilded to the stand. Well, what say you, counsel? The prosecution objects, my lord. Uh, why? On what grounds? As a suspect, he will have already made a full statement to the police. But, but what if there's some reason why he's unable to speak freely? Mag Oops, whoa, that went by too fast. Magnus McDilded is no uneducated ruffian. If it indeed turns out that man had been withholding information, you can be sure it will have been a most deliberate act. Hmm, counsel for defense, what is your opinion? My lord, should we ask Mr. McDilded to testify or not? I'm thinking, yes, we need more information. Yes, we need to hear what he has to say in order to find out the truth. The defense would like to call Mr. McGilda to the stand. Hmm. In that case, I would like to hear the opinion of the jury. Uh, yes, um, I need a little time to consider this. If you ask me, I think we should hear what Mr. McGilda has to say. Get the man out here, I say! It 
would be utterly illogical not to hear his testimony. When something needs doing, it gets it done. That's how I run things at the guild. Hearing what the patron of my favourite little park has to say? Oh yes, that would be lovely. Yes, the jury says the man must be hard. Very well, the court will heal the defendant's testimony. Bailiff, show the defendant to the stand at once. Seriously, the first juror is shady. Now, maybe what actually happened that night will finally become clear. Whoa, that's a lot of moving cats. Let proceedings be resumed. Mr. McGilded, have you been listening to the discourse of the day? To be sure I have, my lord. There are now two matters on which the court desires to hear from you. The first is whether or not there was a third party with you in the omnibus cabin as proposed by the defense. The second is that if such a person was indeed present, why did you conceal that fact from the police? Be gad, no, to stop my nature to hide anything at all. Just answer the questions, please. Truth of the matter is, I've been desperate about this all along. Do I tell you so or keep me mouth shut? Tell us what, Mr. McGilded? The fine fellow representing me is absolutely right. In the carriage on the night with myself and the other man, there was another passenger. It's true. Aye, and twas me who helped the little urchin get away after it all happened. You... what? No, Magnus McGilded, that convenient excuse can't save you now. I'm truly sorry, so I am, Lord Van Zeeks. I'm sure you'll be wanting to know why I said nothing when I was taken in by the police. I do be having a very good reason, I assure you. Which was? Well, the little child was just in the wrong place at the wrong time and not in any way involved, you see. What? If the police had known the wee one was there, They'd have assumed she'd done it. They'd have hauled her into this here courtroom, just like myself. I was only trying to spare her that. There was a girl? Young hearts and young minds are easily damaged, my lord. Hmm, and who was this young child of whom you speak? That? I don't know. You don't know? Aye, well, the wee thing just happened to be in the carriage that night. I never saw her before or since. We have absolutely no reason to believe this man. The prosecution calls for the witness's statements to be disregarded by the court. You know, I wouldn't be surprised. If the urchin isn't here in this courtroom as we speak, listening to the proceedings. What? Smoke! Ah! Fire! That's a fire! No, because I was trying to get away! Cough, cough, after them! It's no use! Cough, cough. I can't see anything through all the smoke! What is going on? Be careful, Mr. Nadahoto, cover your face! Bailiff, don't let the accused escape! Secure the omnibus! I hereby call an emergency recess. Bailiff, ensure the defendant is in custody and clear the courtroom. We were hurriedly removed from the smoke filled courtroom by the bailiff, amid scenes of chaos as people stumbled over one another in their desperation to flee the chamber. We had no idea what was happening. All we knew was that, for the time being at least, a trial was suspended. What? Okay, I thought we would be finishing this, but there seems to be a lot more to it. Save my current progress, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What on earth just happened in there? Mr. Naruhoro, I've managed to find out what happened. Mr. Sato. I was told it was an advanced form of smoke grenade, a type of exploding device that releases smoke. A smoke grenade? It, it sounds like the sort of thing ninjas use. They're just making sure everything is safe now. I think the trial will start again before long. But who would have done something like that? The police managed to catch someone who was trying to flee the courtroom, apparently. Flee the courtroom? Why? Well, it's a young girl of around 15, I hear. A young girl? Then could it be? The other passenger that Mr. McGilded was just talking about? My thoughts exactly. So he wasn't lying. 
Oh, what's become of Mr. McGilded, actually? There's so many things I need to ask him about, but he's not here. I think he was summoned to the prosecutor's antechamber to answer questions. Along with the young girl. Who is she, I wonder? And what was she even doing here at the trial? She was taking a huge risk, and for what possible benefit to herself? There's another matter that's troubling me. What's that? The 20 pence. Hmm? Oh, um... According to the coachman, Mr. Beppo. He took four passengers that night at a fare of five pence each. That comes to a total of 20 pence exactly. But now it seems that there are in fact five passengers. Which means the figures don't seem to add up again. Er, uh, she's right, that is strange. Counsel for the defense, kindly proceed into the courtroom. A young girl like Jelly Toast. I am old, man. I'm an old grandma. The trial will commence and recommence in five minutes. Oh, thank you, officer. We'll go in straight away. Well, whoever she is, I imagine this young girl would be asked to take the stand and testify now. I really can't imagine what she's going to say, but it could alter the whole direction of the trial. Well, no soon enough, Mr. Soto. Yes. Never granny toast, always healthy toast. Ugh, I need to start exercising for real. Ugh, there's a young girl next to Mr. McGilded. Look. She must have been the one who caused a disturbance before. Well, after that rather eventful recess, the court will now resume, resume the trial of Mr. Magnus McGilded. Now then, Lord Van Zeeks. My lord, I believe you have established a cause of the smoke which failed the proceedings earlier. It seems to have been an advanced form of smoke grenade, the sort, uh, typically employed by the army. Good gracious, the army! What in the devil's name? It was an elaborate attempt by a young girl to cloak her escape from the public gallery, but she was caught. Ed now occupies the stand. If she just left quietly, no one would have cared. <laughs> hmm, your name, girl? Are you responsible for the smoke grenade which in induce such pandemonium here in my courtroom. What is the meaning of this deplorable behavior? <clears throat> if I may, my lord. Yes, Mr. McGilded. I think perhaps I ought to explain here. Why, why it is that this real ass was here in the first place and why she tried to bolt like that? It is all tied up with the events of last night, so it is. Hmm. Very well, Mr. McGilded, give your testimony. You will explain to the court exactly how this young woman is involved in the case. Just what did happen last night? It's not like a defense lawyer needs that information or anything. <laughs> nope, you gotta fi find out everything on the fly. The young girl. On the night in question, I took the back seat in the omnibus and promptly nodded off. Then Bacora, a loud thud and a wee scream woke me up with a fair start. There was a fella collapsed on the floor at me feet, so I sat him up on the seat across from me. Then I tried to find out where that scream had come from, and bless my soul, what did I find? There was a child in there, all coiled up in a ball, hiding her wee self away. I remained somewhat baffled, I confess, but from what I gather on the night in question. This young girl was indeed riding in the omnibus, is that correct? Tis exactly as the defense counsel said. The last was the fifth passenger, me lord. Very well, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. Are you ready, counsel? Yes, my lord. Or rather, no. I have no idea where to start. Okay, press to see if there was any anyone else in the seat. And when you first got onto the omnibus, were there any other passengers already on board? There were not. The cabin was empty and there was no one on the roof deck either. You were the first passenger, as it were. I see. Aye, and that's why I took the back side as I did. Just the most comfortable, so it is. Could you explain what uh, exactly what you mean by the back seat? By all means, just how you already described it earlier. 
I'm talking about the seat opposite the one in which the poor gentleman was stabbed and sitting. Well, like I said, it is the most comfortable and where I feel most at ease. And of course, I enjoy gazing through the skylight from time to time as well. Oh man, I still only have three points. Uh, I thought my um, points would all be replenished, but no, it's not. A loud thud, you say, and a scream? Aye, that's right. How can I explain it? It was like the sound of someone falling to the ground. That sort of noise. So you think it was the sound of Mr. Mason falling to the floor, having been stabbed? Well, now, you'll remember I was asleep at the time, so I wouldn't like to say. I went to sound woke me up, uh, woke me and I opened my eyes. There wasn't a soul to be seen in the carriage but the fellow on the floor. Hmm, you didn't see anyone. But at the same moment, you did hear a scream? Ah, from the seats above you on the roof deck, I presume? Not above me, no, my lord. It was from inside the cabin. Well, I wasn't altogether thinking about the scream. No, I was just stunned by the desperate sight before me eyes. Wait, he said no one was there, but then all of a sudden he says the girl's on... curled up on the floor? What? You, you sat him up? The victim, you mean? Oh, so that's how the blood got on the floor, because he got stabbed, fell to the floor, bleeding out, and then he sat him up. Okay. That I did. All the seat across would be, as I said. I could plainly see the poor devil was already gone. And you wouldn't leave a dead man just lying on the floor now, would you? Just common courtesy, so it is. I find that a little hard to believe. Ah, rah, Lord Van Zeeks. Now why would that be? You wake to find a man lying dead at your feet in a carriage. Any normal person would hail the cabman. Any upstanding member of London society, that is. Well now, as you know, I'm in something of a special line of business. The business of lending money at exorbitant rates of interest. Unfortunately, my lord, not everyone is thankful for the help I offer them, and some would even see me dead. So I do try, where at all possible, to get avoid getting myself in a tangle with trouble. Are you suggesting you were just going to leave the man there? That was a lie. No, I was always intending to report, so I was. Only, I had a mind to find out the whys and wherefores first. The whys and wherefores? Right you are. There were some details I wanted to uh, understand before anyone else got to meddle in. That wee scream I heard, for example. Wouldn't you good self do just the same? Hmm, yes. The scream he says he heard at the time at the thub as the thud of the victim collapsing. Then it turned out... Blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm afraid I don't understand. I'm sure you told the court that there was no one else in the carriage except yourself and the victim. So I did, so, so I did. As far as I could see, that is. What do you mean by that? Well now, tis a queer thing. The wee scream I heard as I woke up. It came from, if you'll excuse the vulgar expression, under me backside. Good gracious. Under your backside? And when I lifted the seat on which I'd be sitting, I found there was a wee cubby hole there for storage. Mr. Naruhodo, we can examine the omnibus ourselves, remember? Yes, of course. The whole bus was submitted as evidence. I've already examined that. This would be a very good time to have a thorough look around inside. I did it, but just to, uh, just to make you happy, I'll examine it further. Oh wait, did I read this? About like women's clothes? See, it looks reasonably soft, just wide enough for two gentlemen to sit side by side, really. Of course, an English gentlewoman would be dressed in such finery. It would be quite impossible for her to climb up to the roof deck, so she would have to be seated in here. A woman in a kimono would have, uh, have the same problem. Women's clothes are very impractical, aren't they? Oh wait, I have to ha examine the handle. See, it has a handle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my gosh, someone could fit in there. No, 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 oh, frack, I have to do it again. Oh. Uh. Have a look inside. The only reason why I'm examining this again is because I think new dialogue is going to pop up. As opposed to like when I examined it the first time. There's nothing in here, it's totally empty. Something doesn't uh, seem right here, but I can't put my finger on what it is. 
that it's completely empty. Okay. And that's when I found her. There was a child in there curled up in a ball. You say she was hiding herself. Aye, that's right. It was hard to see in the dim lamplight, -like, but she was all curled up in a wee ball when our eyes met. Well, me heart needed to stop beating in me chest. Ugh, you're really overacting this. Still and all, I pulled her out from under there and sat her on the seat opposite so I could have a wee chin bag with her. The seat opposite? That's right, just next to the dead gentleman there. You sat this young girl next to a corpse, sir. Well, as I'm sure I mentioned, a gentleman in my position can all too often find himself in more danger. So, I needed to find out just who this urchin was, you see. Hmm. And while I was in the middle of talking with her, I heard another scream, a fellow's voice this time. Presumably that scream was Mr. First, who was sitting on the roof deck seats. Right you are again, I would say, sir. Looking down through the skylight, he must have seen this young girl and the gentleman with the knife in his belly. In other words, the previous witnesses did not, in fact, see what all Mr. McGill did. What they believed to be yourself and the victim was, in fact, this girl and the late Mr. Mason. Hi, my lord. I was, as I think everyone understands now, sat at the back of the carriage out of sight. It is certainly plausible. The defendant is somewhat diminutive in stature. And readily confused, perhaps, with this young girl. After that, of course. With the scream from the gentleman over us, the driver realized something was wrong and pulled up the horses. Thank you, I've heard enough. The events as explained are clear in my mind. However, at least one conundrum remains. Who is the girl? Her name is Gina Lestrade, my lord. Lestrade? Lestrade. Isn't that a detective? She's a chancer. Earns her crust among large crowds for leaving people out of purses. What's commonly called a pickpocket. What? This girl here, a petty thief. Order, order. Is this true, Miss Lestrade? Miss Lestrade, you will answer the question. What the heck? Oh, how dare you? What is the meaning of this? Ah, oh, the girl, she's gone. Open your eyes. Oh, I'm over here. Good gracious, how? What was the point in that little sidestep? I know what you lot are thinking. Grown-ups are all the same. This dirty little dipper, you'll say, slipped up and got caught on the job. She got herself back into a corner, so she knifed a gent. Go on, that's what's in your heads, ain't it? No, not at all. This is a court of law. We're here to determine the truth, not cast... Oh, boy. Look, knives are for cowards. Only thugs use weapons like that. And I need for... I all I need for what I do is these fingers. I'm a professional, right? Maybe not in your eyes, but I got pride in what I do. Let me guess, you don't count smoke guns among weapon for thugs. Oh, this. Yeah, this is in a bag I lifted the other day, down where they keep the four-wheel drags. It's nice, isn't it? I like the pink best. Oh, do not wave that thing in my direction again. Poofy toast. <laughs> I'm here. Why is there an echo? Is there an echo? Why is there an echo? Also, hey, Beagle, how you doing? Thanks for joining. All I need for what I do with these fingers, that's what she said. Ah ha ha ha. So, you admit that you were riding the omnibus on the night in question. Uh... She's alright, lass. You can tell them the truth now. All right, yeah. It's just like the Irish man said. The court accepts this girl, this Gina Lestrade, as a valid and significant witness in this case. Accordingly, young lady, we will now hear your testimony, if you please. Oh shoot, is the echo in through my mic or through the game audio? 
You will tell the court exactly what happened in the omnibus on the night in question. Alright, if I have to. You don't hear one? Okay. What the girl saw. So I snuck inside the carriage before they looked up the horses, just like always. But it was right all waste of time. I got nothing to show for me troubles that night. I'll tell you, you can't see a blind thing in that hiding place. It's pitch in there. Then after a while, I heard a loud bang. Nearly jumped out of my skin, I did, and the scream just came out. It's because of that, uh, this swell found me. He, he did help me get away, mind. Sounds like an echo in your room. Oh, but that's always there, so eh. Yes, he let you go. I fail to understand why you would let the street urchin go, Mr. McGilded. Oh, to simplicity itself, my lord. You see, she couldn't possibly have killed the other passenger. I knew that for a fact. How? As I'm sure I said before, sir. I was sitting right on top of the place where she was hiding herself. I think a, dem I think a demonstration is called for. This is where I sat that night. And the cubbyhole of which you have spoken is underneath the seat, I presume? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Hmm, yes, it does appear just large enough to accommodate someone of the girl's stature. Aye, but of course, the wee lass was stuck in there. Because I parked myself on the seat for the duration. Oh. So, you see, that's why I let the lass bolt. I knew that if the police found her there, they'd automatically assume she'd done it. Well, I couldn't live with myself if a young life was ruined when all the time I knew she was innocent. Even though you must have realized your action would result in your own innocence being called into question. Not at all, my lord, not at all. I knew in my own heart that I was innocent. So I thought it was worth taking a part in my own good name for the um, sake of this less fortunate lass. My goodness. What a perfect gentleman. My lord, this, this fine example of a man cannot possibly be guilty of a heinous crime like this. I'm ashamed of myself for ever doubting you, sir. With calm, calculated reasoning, one arrives clearly at the truth every time. Oh, but something's gonna happen, and they're gonna. Fanzix is gonna be like, whoa, but hey, guys. So it's alive. All six members of the jury consensual in their leaning to a verdict of not guilty. Mr. Nerdwaddle, this. Well, it must mean. It must mean what? That we're victorious. We've won? Are, are you sure? Idiot. Yep, here we go. Whoa, okay. With his boot. It decided my iron heeled Wellington offense. Pray do forgive the discourtesy. This really is a consummate example of the one monumental flaw in British judicial practices. Where evidence and reasoning should be paramount, emotion rules the day. Emotion? The witness's latest statement gives us a clear insight into his true nature. What do you mean, his true nature? Do you really think Scotland Yard would have made such a glaring omission? After the incident, the omnibus was comprehensively searched by officers of the police. Obviously, the interior of this cubbyhole, as the witness put it, was included in their investigation. The compartment under the posterior seat was full of the coachman's belongings. It's noted in black and white here in the police report. Good lord. The evidence has been tampered with. In order to corroborate Mr. McGilded's story, someone was un has unlawfully removed everything from under the seat. What? <coughs> order! Order! How could such a devious contrivance possibly have been affected, Council? 
Naturally, we must acknowledge the deficiencies of the constabulary in allowing this to have happened. However, I assure you, when the omnibus was wheeled into the courtroom this morning, the compartment under the seat was not empty. Well, my Nipponese friends... Hmm? Me? When the carriage was submitted as evidence, doubtless you examined it in fine detail as would any self-respecting practitioner of the law. Pray, what did you find your, the condition of the underseat compartment to be? Oh, to be sure, the young gentleman will be able to clear this up in a jiffy. Sorry? Go ahead, you tell the court now, fella. How this is all an elaborate excuse by the desperate Lord Van Zeeks. Well, counsel, do you have any something to say on this matter? How am I supposed to answer? What could I say about the state of that little compartment under the seat in the Yantwas? It wasn't empty. I gotta be true. Honest, it wasn't empty. I really don't know if giving this answer is helping my cause as counsel for the defense. But as far as I remember, at least... When I first examined the compartment, I'm fairly certain there were a number of articles inside it, yes. Oh, are you sure, counsel? Ah, Rob, be whist. What are you saying now, you daft dog? I thought you were on my side here. There's a reason the game made you investigate again. Mmm. What game are you playing at? Your task is to defend the man at the stand. Why would you say something to compromise his position? As the advocate for the defense in this trial, I confess I'm still not entirely sure where I stand. But it seems to me that I should state what facts I do know as clearly and honestly as possible. Interesting. Was it really Matilda that killed him? Tis not altogether pleasing, fella. I'm simply telling the truth, Mr. McGilded. Well, don't forget that you're supposed to be representing me. Uh, my best interest here, lad. Now then. A fellow's memory is a curious thing and not altogether reliable. No, the court was considered facts. That that cubby hole under the seat is as empty as the devil's heart, so it is. Do you think perhaps it would be in your best interest now to admit that you might have been mistaken? Why? Why do I feel like something's not right here? Hmm. I should like the jury to wait on this matter, I think. That compartment is designed to house equipment used to maintain the smooth running of the carriage. The guild's rules state that omnibuses should be properly and fully equipped at all times. So it certainly wouldn't have been empty on the night in question. Beppo isn't that irresponsible. That money lending fleece on the pig piss are lying. Ah, here we go. The scales tip again. Ah! I can't believe I was nearly taken in. The stinking rich are always stinkers. Nothing but cows, a lot of them. What? Oh no. It's a trick. Of course it's a trick. Honestly, what the jury thinks, I don't care, because it they'll always be wishy-washy. Quite so, I must concur here. Come on, all of you, throw your flames to the black side. With calm, calculated reasoning won't arise clearly at the truth every time. Yes, but every time a different truth, it seems. My lord, I humbly exhibit the scales of justice. Clearly, a verdict of not guilty at this time would be wholly inappropriate. Thank you, counsel. But before we proceed any further, there is the matter of outstanding cross-examination. Counsel for the defense, begin your questioning of the witness, please. Yes, my lord, what just happened? The whole balance of the trial just sifted about almost beyond recognition. Hey, Mudkiss, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. All right, we're doing a cross-examination. Yep. <laughs> the Reaper of the Bailey is at work, it would seem. Man, I'm sleepy. Why am I so sleepy? Ooh. So I stuck beside the bed, blah, blah, blah. 
So, you were already in the Omnibus before it even set off on its run. Well, yeah. I mean, what's the point of spending a jelly to make a few bob, eh? That's a rum's idea, isn't it? I suppose she means there's no point in spending money to make money. It actually makes sense. Counsel, may I remind you that this girl is a petty thief. Kindly refrain from entertaining her tenants. Well, that does clear up a little mystery of the fares and all. Four paying passengers at five pints apiece, making the twenty to which the captain testified. And one little skate grace riding for free. The red cock of a driver always goes for some grub before his last run, see? So that's why I step into the carriage and get myself in under the seat. Nice and easy, right? But your hiding place is a storage compartment. Full of equipment for the coach, no? Yeah, there's brushes and buckets and whatnot in there, sure. Why don't we chuck all that out and cram it in a corner somewhere? No one ever seems to bother much. And yet, according to the report filed by the police officer who first arrived at the scene, the compartment was full of such paraphernalia. Well, I don't know nothing about that. Like I said, I moved all that stuff out so I could hide under the seat. That's all I can tell you. Hmm, it seems we've reached the end of that line of inquiry. Continue. Saw Free Guy yesterday, good movie if anyone is interested. I was actually like kind of interested just to be like, I want to see what they do with the story. I actually saw Suicide Squad. It was a lot better than the first one. I will tell you that. A waste of time, why is that? Well, most nights I'm on my own in the guard uh, permit at. Wait. I'm on my own in the guard permit at least some of the time. I beg your pardon? Did you say guard permit? Oh, yeah, well, that's what I can't, I can't call it. You call it the omnibus, I suppose. The point is, any normal run, the carriage ain't got no one in it for a while. And that's when you come out of your hiding place and get away? That's it. Only that night. This curve was sat on me from the uh, me seat from the start. And he didn't budge the whole way, did he? Not one inch. I was totally stuck. Do you mean to tell us that you were present in the carriage for the duration? You were under the seat the entire time while events unfolded in the enclosed cabin. Yeah. Right, mister? To be sure, to be sure. I was as shocked as anyone. You don't expect to lift a cushion you'd be sat on a fight of child now, do you? Hmm, so this was Lestrade couldn't possibly be the culprit then. Mm -mm. Suicide, great movie. Uh, yeah, Disney kind of screwed the sales like they did with Black Widow. Oh, yeah. Wait, no. Uh, Suicide Squad isn't Disney, it's uh, Warner Brothers. I'll tell you, you can't see a blind thing in that hiding place. So you couldn't see out into the cabin at all. Not a job. Most days I push the cushion up with me home and look out to crack. Then I'm gonna have a butcher's at who I'm gonna fill. I thought you were a pickpocket, not a butcher. I mean, I can have a look. The seat I get under ain't as plush as the other ones, see? So most of the time, passengers plant themselves opposite. But well, for some reason that night, this year Irishman spent the whole journey right over me head. And for that reason, you weren't able to push the cushion up to peek out, I see. Truth is, I ain't too happy in small dark places. Feels too much like being thrown in a clink. But it's the only place to item in carriages, so it's Opson's choice. Why doesn't she just stick to picking pieces of uh, people's pockets in the open then? I'd say there's some reason that she's not letting on, judging from her demeanor. So anyways, I was a bit scared and I just had to stick it out, under there. Nothing else for it. Haha, <laughs> mixing franchises, it's, it's all a blur. Yeah, there's just like... I don't know, I feel like corporations are just taking everything, so like, eventually every single IP is just gonna be under one big giant umbrella corporation, it's just... It's gonna be a monopoly! When you say loud bang, do you mean the noise of someone falling to the floor? Could have been, I suppose. I don't remember so well. Point is, it made me jump. And you let out a scream, involuntarily? That's right, and then I felt a cushion over me egg get lighter all of a sudden. Presumably when the defendant got up in order to help the victim, yes. Or not. It could equally have been the moment the accused stood in order to stab his victim, could it not? Well, girl, did you see what happened at the crucial moment? Yeah, I saw it. I pushed up the cushion and a quick butcher's while I had the chance, didn't I? 
The Irishman was sitting at the bloke with a phone on the floor that the seat opposite. Google will take over the world if it hasn't already. That matches Mr. Bagilda's account, of, of course. But then, the fellow suddenly turns around and looks right at me. I sunk back down again, but it was too late by then. I should never risk uh, looking. It's because of Rebbe Debbe. Why am I so tired today? Oh, my eyes are burning. And when Mr. McGillard discovered you, he pulled you out from your hiding place? I was scared stiff, I was. He dragged me out and sat me down on the seat and all. Next to the victim, Mr. Mason? Yeah, the bloke had a knife in his guts. He was still blatant. Then the carriage lurched a bit and he ended up falling onto me. Ugh, how awful. Both me and Anne's got covered in blood. It made me feel sick as a dog. Both her hands covered in blood. That must be what the rooftop passenger saw. After that, I believe you talked with Mr. McGilded for a while, is that correct? He asked me some stuff. Wanting to know my name and what I was up to and all... And that. Woo. Then I heard something from, from above. Someone screamed. Yes, Mr. First on the roof deck, one would presume. Well, I didn't want no one seeing my face, so I didn't look up. Then the horses were drawn up, smart Irish and he here Irishman says to me... Get back on the seat. I'll see that you can get away later. Hmm. All six members of the jury had decided the defendant was innocent. For one brief shining moment, yes. It's clear that they are still very unsure. If we could just find some conclusive piece of evidence among this new testimony, I'm sure we could clinch the verdict we want. Yes, I think you're right, and I have this niggling feeling. Something's bothering me, but I can't I just can't quite put my finger on it. As much as I dislike Epic Games, I feel like Fortnite has a better chance unifying everything. Ha 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 You sure it's not gonna be Minecraft? <laughs> um, I pressed on everything. So what's my... Mm, mm, let's see... Eight-seater... I mean, I pressed on every single statement. And I can't see people. Here, okay, so maybe I'm supposed to press another statement that I have a niggling feeling on. Nearly jumped out of my skin. This one still seems like a little fishy. Loud bang, someone falling on the floor. Covenance pose, don't remember so well. Made me jump. Let that screen involuntarily. We'll get lighter to help the victim or when he stabbed him. Did you see what happened? Yeah, I saw it. I was sitting up the bloke, had fallen at the seat opposite. Master matches Mr. McGill's account. Fell turns around, looks right at me, stuck back down again. Mm, press this again. Scared stuff. Looks like this. Oh, she. He fell onto her. That's why both her hands are bloody. After that, talk with him. Wait! Wait, no, because if... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, um... So... So, she heard the thump, she screamed, and then, um... And then he propped up the body, he found her, he sat her next to him. Oh, so first didn't see them yet because they were talking for a while. Then I heard something from Rob. Some okay, so someone screamed after they talked. Okay. Didn't want someone to see me face, so I didn't look up. Force of Dreno Smartish and here Iris listen to me. Get back under seat, I'll see that you can get away later. Thanks, 
true possessive whatever. Okay, so am I supposed to examine the carriage again then? Um Like, is there something inside that I'm supposed to find again? It's horrible. Okay, so... Blood on the ground? That's blood, isn't it? Is something wrong? Oh, it's just, well, the blood stain is so obvious, that's all. And yet, Van Zeke's made no mention of it. I suppose that does seem a little strange. Why do I have such a bad feeling about this? Let's blow that stuff into seat, the victims obviously. Yes, and the seat would be clearly visible from the roof deck, which would really stab someone in full view of the other passengers like that. I wonder, it was after dark, there was a lamp on. Uh, can't find anything out of place. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Hey Nier, how you doing? Thanks for joining! Okay, the seat's handle. Storage compartment, nothing in here, totally empty. Something doesn't seem right here, but I can't put my finger on what it is. It's because it used to be full. It had blankets and stuff. Bloody toast. Oh, I can't, I can't figure it out. What the heck is this? I mean, all this blood would be because he got stabbed and he fell, and then all the blood dripped out. But what am I supposed to see? Am I missing something? But like... Okay, there's a button missing. Is, is that a thing? It's like, oh, a button got caught and... Wait a minute. No, I was like, hey, is this, um... Gina Lestrade? Because, like, the hair seems similar, but no, it's Mr. Mason. For sure. Mm. What am I supposed to find? I don't know. I don't know what's fishy in her... I don't care about the sheath, okay? Ugh. Okay. I don't think there's anything inside. <sighs> I don't know. What am I supposed to find? Something's something's not right. Got nothing to show for your trolls at night. You can't see a blind thing hiding in that place. You can see out into the cabin, not a job. Most days I push the cushion up and look at the crack, and I can have butchers of what I'm gonna fiddle. Um, can have a look. Passengers plant itself opposite. For some reason that night, this Irishman spent the whole journey right here over me head. And for that reason, you weren't able to push the cushion up to peek out, I see. Truth is, I ain't too happy in small dark places. Feels like... I was supposed to press, and I was supposed to just, um, get this um okay pursue excuse me sir is something wrong mr mcgilded oh i do apologize was there something the matter council i'm just wondering if mr Strahd's last comment made something occur to you perhaps you seem to be thinking of something uh thinking something to yourself oh no no it was not important I was just feeling bad for the poor lass is all. I remember feeling desperate myself as a young lad, shut him in the dark, just terrifying so it was. I see, yes, I'm sure we can all sympathize. I'm still scared of the dark now. Aye, and I don't know about yourself. Well, I find that darkness seems to make everything you hear seem that much louder as well. Yeah, I suppose it does, maybe. Mr. Strahd, did you hear something that night? Anything? An unusual noise, perhaps? Nah, not really. All I could hear was the Irishman snoring. 
Be jabers, there's no need to tell the whole world of me fo foibles, you little scat. What a pity. If only Miss Lestrade had heard something, it might have given us a new vital clue. Yes, what should we make of that last statement of hers? It's profoundly important. Because why all of a sudden do you say you hear nothing? My lord, I believe the statement just made by the witness is profoundly important. Profoundly important? But, but all she said was that she heard nothing. Yes, which is the profoundly important part. I'm almost sure of it. <laughs> almost sure. Hmm, I'm almost sure that I don't understand the inner workings of your Eastern mind, Council, nevertheless. Miss Gina Lestrade, you will supplement your formal testimony by repeating the last statement, please. What? Supplement? What are you what are you on about? Don't give me all your fancy talk. I know what you're trying to do. Well what work on me? That's right, insult the judge. Always a good move. I was straining me ears to work out what was going on, but all I could hear was snoring. So you're straining to hear what was happening in the entire time since the moment you hid yourself? Um, not exactly, no. Sorry? Well, there was no one in the cabin to start with. I could just push the cushion up and have a budget to see what was what. But then, when I saw the swell getting on, I got me head down so he didn't notice me. And Mr. McGill had sat on the seat under which you were hiding, correct? Yeah, would you and Adam and even a What a mug! So then, all I could do was listen. I was waiting to jump out there as soon as I heard him leave, see? But would he? Not likely. Even though we stopped here and there, I never heard the door open. So I just had to stay put and listen to him driving his pigs to market, snowing like an old dog he was. Hmm, are there any conclusions we can draw from that, I wonder? It doesn't add up because Mr. Mason obviously got on. So you had to, to like hear the door open. Miss Lestrade, what you have just told the courts is clearly at odds with the facts. Ah! At odds? Uh, are you sure, man? Absolutely. It seems my learned Nipponese friend is not as dull-witted as I feared. So Vansix realized it too. Counsel. I must insist that you bolster your claim with the evidence, or some complicit party's name at the very least. Yes, my lord. I expect you to demonstrate this alleged contradiction to the courts. According to Miss Lestrade, while she was hiding in the omnibus that night, she heard nothing but the sound of Mr. McGilded snoring, but think, Nunoz, yet think. There's something else she could have heard. Show a person. Very well, my lord, allow me to elaborate. On a particular sound that Miss Lestrade could not have failed to hear on the night in question. Oh wait, is it is it the person or is it the carriage because he opened the door? I'll just I'll just do Mason. Oh, I'm right! Yay! Thrice fired Mason. Yes, my lord, the sound that Miss Lestrade cannot have failed to hear. Bloody toast, slappy toast. Pew pew. <laughs> Is that of the victim, Mr. Mason, boarding the omnibus? Order! Order! Explain your reasoning, counsel! Miss Lestrade, allow me to confirm something. You claimed earlier that you were the first person on the um, board the omnibus. Is that correct? Yeah, of course I was. I got on while the driver was in the pub, didn't I? And the next person on to board the omnibus was Mr. McGilded. It was not a soul was in the cabin when I climbed aboard. At least not in plain sight. So you were, to all intents and purposes, alone in the enclosed cabin of the omnibus at that time. Did I not just say as much? I was traveling with anyone else, if that's what you mean. I wasn't traveling with anyone else. Yeah, I saw him get on, remember? Through the crack under the seat cushion. It was on his own, for sure. And from what we've heard, the carriage made a number of stops after that on its onward journey. During which time, did you not hear the door opening or closing at all? Nah, I never heard it. That's exactly what I was listening for, weren't it? Waiting for the swell to leave. In which case, when and how did the victim end up in the carriage? Ah, oh. We know that the victim collapsed inside the enclosed cabin of the omnibus. Therefore, 
Miss Lestrade's statement about what she did or did not hear is at odds with the facts. Ah! Yes, this petty thief's statement was clearly flawed. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. Lord Van Zeeks. Yes, he knew. He knew all too well that there was an inconsistency in Miss Lestrade's statement. <laughs> it would seem words of thanks are in order for my learned friend. What are you talking about? You have demonstrated matters impeccably. This witness and her colorful statements are entirely unreliable. Her words are convenient untruths, nothing more. Oh, oh, oh. Is that right? How could the victim possibly not have bought the omnibus? That makes no sense whatsoever. And this girl's pickpocket, let's not forget that. Oh, Granny. Tip into scales once again. Ah, she she didn't even say anything. I didn't want to judge the little dear mite just because she has some rather naughty ways. I must say. I can't abide liars. And neither can I. Mr. Foreman. I didn't want to judge the girl just because she has some less than salubrious ways. But I must say, I cannot abide liars. Oh no, it's gonna be guilty again. Whatever will we do? Ah! Mr. Nodohoro, that's five trade members leaning towards guilty. Eh, hey, my hollow chalice. Well, your consideration for others is refreshing, my Nipponese friend. To the considerable troubles you have spared me. Someone seriously throw that cup in his face. He's so annoying. Yes, very refreshing. Ah! God, what are you playing at? Have you forgotten who you're working for, you useless least of Marmadan? This is carnage, it's perfect. <laughs> Jury number two is the only one left. Mr. Naruhoro, the way this is going, I know, if we can't find some new way to convince everyone of Mr. McGillis' innocence, the judge will rule and will have lost. I very much wanted to believe the words of one of London's most respected gentlemen, but those of us in service know we must accept hard truths. You, they're all too like trigger happy with their um, decisions. Just wait until you hear everything, gosh. Yes, the witness's last statement seems to have revealed a critical inconsistency in her story. However, if we consider the possibility that her statement is in fact the truth, it may shed an entirely new light on this whole case. What are you saying? Counsel! I'm sorry, sir? Whatever do you mean? Counsel, I will not tolerate you attempting to prog- What? Prorogue? I don't- I've never seen that word before. My adjudication. Explain yourself at once. When the accused boarded the omnibus on the night in question, the victim was nowhere to be seen. Subsequently, the carriage door was not heard opening a single time as testified by the witness in the stand. And yet, the victim's body was found inside the carriage. If this petty thief's words are to be believed, how do you explain the victim's miraculous appearance inside the cabin of the omnibus? Was it a triple threat? Like, no, but why would they pin it all on? Because I'm like, no, because the banker owes McGilded money, so he wouldn't want to be working together with him. And the Hatter, is he on it too? The window doesn't open, does it? There's only one way to explain how the victim came to be inside the carriage. He was already in there. There's another entrance. He was put there after he died. How? I don't know. What? He was in there already? But there's no other compartments for him to have been there. There's another entrance. 
I need to examine the skylight to see if it, if it can be opened. Because if the skylight can be opened... You can certainly see the inside of the carriage. There's a lamp in the closed cabin. See, quite clearly, that's not good for us. Okay, so it can't be opened. Didn't hear the door opening. There's nothing on the bottom, so he can't have come in through another entrance. Because these windows are too small to, like, shove a body through. He was in there already? But... They both claimed that he wasn't in there. So the only... Observation... The only answer could be that he was put in there after he died, and maybe that's the... Loud noise she- I'm just gonna say this. It's put in there after he died. Obviously, the victim has- Oh, it's wrong. Damn it. The victim must have been placed in the carriage after he was killed. Yeah, take away my health. Tell me, my learned friend, what was the function of that obviously in your last sentence? Hmm? Well said, Lord Van Zeeks. The obviously is troubling me also. No, no, that's really not the point. The point is that the victim must have been moved into the carriage afterwards. Then answer me this. How could a cadaver have been placed inside a moving carriage? Wait, it's right? Oh, no, it, it is wrong. Damn it. Penalty is evidently not heavy enough, judging from those Nipponese eyes. So I ask you again, are you making fun of my eyes? That's racist. Penalty or how to explain the figure is miraculous. Then I'm going to do my other theory, that there's another entrance? Because he can't have been there already. Because they have a dead body. There's another entrance? Damn it, it's wrong. If the door wasn't open was the only explanation, the victim entered the enclosed cabin in some other way. Wonder what new fantasy you would come up with in your blind panic. But behold, the only bus is here for all to- um, I'm loading, I'm loading. I know, I'm wrong, I'm sorry! Only one side of the enclosed cabin is furnished with the door. The other only has windows. Fixed windows, which cannot possibly open. In short, there's no entrance to the cabin other than that door. But there could be. There's one possibility you haven't considered. Oh, really? Yes, the other way inside isn't that door. Isn't the door. Another opening, the use of which allowed the victim to appear inside the enclosed cabin. Wait, is it right? It's another entrance? All right, counsel. The defense will identify the location for the courts. Here's the omnibus in which the incident occurred. Where on earth is this entrance by which you proposed the victim entered the cabin? I'm gonna go for it. I think it's the skylight. I'm right! Oh, holy crap! The answer is obvious. It can have only have been discussed. Okay, yeah, so maybe I was right. It's the three of them in cahoots, Mr. McGilded, or no, it's the Hatter, Mr. First, and the Banker who work together, and they were like, oh yeah, we are totally sitting on the top, and then just dump the body to make it look like McGilded killed him, because the Banker owed McGilded money, and the Hatter, I have no idea why. I say, the Skylight. Your ludicrous proposal almost had me lost for words, however... The skylight may well be large enough for someone to pass through, but then... He got 20 pence, so he had to have had the money from someone. Unless all three of them sat on the top. Did I read that line? It was someone said it. So you claim. But do you have a shred of evidence to support your adult brain theory? Both Mr. McGilded and Miss Lestrade said the same in their testimonies. They each claimed to have heard a loud thud, such as the noise made by someone falling to the floor. Yes, which was, uh, which has already been explained. How is the sound of the victim falling from his seat, having been assaulted with a dagger? Yes, it has. But would a man slipping from the seat onto the floor really have made such a loud noise as the witnesses describes? A noise loud enough to cause Miss Lestrade to let out an involuntary cry, in fact. Good, good gracious! Perhaps, in fact. That was the moment that the victim made his entrance into the cabin. No, let me rephrase that. The victim didn't enter the cabin as such. 
He fell into it. You're now suggesting that the victim fell from the skylight into the cabin. That's simply impossible. How can you be so sure? Because if the victim had fallen inside through the skylight, as you say, the passengers on the roof deck would have seen it happen. And yet, not one person made mention of such events in their testimony because they're the killers! Well, um, yes, that's true, but... Hold it! Might a humble fellow make a wee comment here? Mr. Mr. McGilded? To be sure now, the two fellows who were sat on the roof testified of four. Said nothing of the victim falling through the skylight. But it seems to me, my lord, that it is not so much a case of them not saying, but... Aye. It is a case of them being unable to say. What? I think perhaps the two fellas... Do be having something of a compelling reason not to mention what happened. Would you not agree, fine ladies and gentlemen of the jury? Hmm. Oh my, my goodness, surely not. Those two chaps on the roof. You mean the ones who stuck that knife in the man were? Ah! Hold it. Oh, they're back. Just what exactly are you insinuating here, you you blitherer? You raw, he said. You raw. What are you insinuating? Why do you jump like that? There's a flaming outrage. I've a good mind to give you a blinker in a minute. He'll give you a shine in a minute, he said, and so will I. Mr. Fairplay, you're fist You're effectively accusing me, a certain gentleman and well-respected banker. And me, a, a very angry haggard. Suggesting that someone like me could have stabbed that man in the guts, it's... it's... it's a disgrace! It's scandalous! It's... Arr. I protest! I protest in the strongest possible terms! That's right! I protest too! About you, you rotten scoundrel! Order! Order! This is not the time, witnesses. I will not permit this wanton invasion of the stand. Return to the anteroom at once! But, but this is beyond reason, my lord. Oh, it's outrageous. Something about... Something about first now seems odd. Because look at his hat. It's like... It's um mended. And it's crooked. But the rest of his clothes don't fit him. They don't have any, like, um... Stitch marks. They look kind of high class. Where did he get that outfit from? It, it's very hurtful, you know. My lord, if I may comment. Go ahead, Lord Van Zeex. It was a defense that it's- Oops, Blah, I'm speaking with Mr. First. Um, if you actually reload it before that, I wonder, um... Yeah, I should have reloaded, <laughs> whatever. Uh, oh, if I reloaded before I, um... I went through the second option, wow, that would have been annoying. <laughs> Running in place like that must take a lot of energy. Yeah, at least he's getting his cardio in. It was, the it was the defense that incited this outburst from the witnesses. My learned friend has seen fit to abandon all protocol and accuse the witnesses without proof. Accuse? I, I never intended to. It seems, young Nipponese, that your command of the English tongue is wanting. Uh, uh, uh. You proposed to this court that the victim fell to the skylight from the roof deck of the omnibus. The hypothesis cannot possibly stand without the rooftop passengers being aware of the events. You have branded these gentlemen liars. You have intimidated their criminal guilt. But they, you, they clearly have lied to us before. Their witness, their testimonies were wrong. I had to correct them. You know they're liars. <laughs> In our British courts of law, that is what termed a baseless accusation. I know I was rash to put this idea forward without any actual evidence, but you can't just dismiss it without a second thought. What are you wasting time for? Get to the- <clears throat> Testify! I thought there was something fishy about that hat from the moment I laid eyes on the fellow. We have to see this matter through now, one way or another. 
There's filth and rubbish in our midst. We must dispose of it at once. Testify! 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 What's what's happening, Mr. Naruhoto? The spectators in the public gallery are they're in a complete frenzy. Mr. Fairplay and Mr. First. Um, my lord. You, you will take the stand again and make another formal testimony. In reference to the indictment brought by the defense. Um, yes, my lord. I, I didn't come here for this. There's no time to think this through. All I can do is keep pushing forward. I need to work out too, Jelly. You need to keep me accountable. You need to keep me accountable, dude. Refuting the accusation. We were the only two people up on that roof deck, dead or alive. I can swear to that. If anything happened while we were sitting, don't you think one or the other of us had noticed? In any case, neither of us know the first thing about the victim. We had no reason to kill the man. The sky that was shut the entire time, I tell you. We couldn't possibly have opened it. If you're so- Oh, I missed it! Oh no! What was the last thing you said? I pressed A too fast. Hmm, I must say that I'm listening to this testimony. It is- Oh wait, I could just do this. Um, if you're so sure the victim fell through the skylight, where's your proof? Oh, psh, that's useless. It's somewhat hard to imagine. But the fact of the matter is, there was 20 pence that the driver collected. Gina's not one of them, so it has to be four passengers. So the- mm. How either witness could have performed any malevolent act on this open rooftop deck without the other noticing forthwith, because they're in cahoots. That's right, you see. We're innocent, I tell you. Although logically, of course, the argument falls down if you two were in collusion with, another, with, a, with one another. What? Eh! According to the investigations by Scotland Yard, the two witnesses shared no common dealings. Ha! Well, I don't trust couples any more than I trust the stinking rich. Something doesn't feel right here. The trial is going in our favor, really. So why do I feel so uneasy? Counsel for the defense, over to you. Your cross-examination, please. Oh, yes, my lord. Okay, so now... They're like, there's no common denominator. I think... The common denominator is Mr. McGilded. The banker, clearly, fair play because he owes him 20 guineas. But if... If you... Oh, it is different. Okay, never mind. Because I was thinking that the Hatter, Mr. First, um, knew this dude, Mr. Mason, because may maybe he was the Hatter that made this hat. Because it has the same, like... Stitching, but now that I look at the picture, it's wait a minute. Um, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. let me look at the oh, I can't look at people. Gosh darn, I wanted to look at profiles to look at the hat better, but okay, never, never mind. How long is that old man gonna be stabbed for? Forever! <laughs> um, you probably forgot from last stream, but Beppo revealed he increased the fair price at the time. Oh, yeah, so instead of four pence, it's five. But that still no, that still requires four passengers if he wants 20 pence. So three confirmed are McGilded, Fairplay, and Hearst. So there has to have been a fourth. So I'm thinking Mason got did get on, but he got on the roof. And that's why I didn't hear anything. And then these two killed him and dropped him. It was like, hey, if we get McGilded in court, I mean in jail, then like we'll split money or or somehow. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, dead or alive, I can swear to that. So at no time did the victim, Mr. Mason, climb up to join you on the roof deck? Absolutely not. Dick it. No question about it, he said. None at all. Oh, but yes, of course. I, I remember seeing them both. I saw the victim inside the enclosed cabin talking with this man here. Is this true, Mr. McGilded? Dear me, my lord, at the risk of repeating myself. I boarded the omnibus alone and nodded off inside almost immediately. That's an outright lie. Without doubt, you were engaged in. Let me stop you that fella and ask: Do you have any any uh, any evidence at all at all? Ah. Uh. 
It's all about evidence in the courts these days, so it is. You do well to remember that. <laughs> ah, I saw you with my own eyes! This is going so well. If anything, blah, blah, blah. Well, it was on the final run of the omnibus at past 10 o'clock in the evening. It would certainly have been quite dark, perhaps too dark to see clearly. Is this some kind of a lock? Is this a kind of a joke, he said. Is that what it is? Or perhaps one or the other of you fell asleep briefly. Are you fair dinkum, sir? Are you serious, sir? That's what he said. It's impossible, I tell you. I'd give you the keys to the vault if you could fall asleep in that bitter cold. And if you did manage it, your eyelids would freeze shut and you'd never open them again. That's extreme. It was extreme, I tell you, and we had to put up with it because this man unlocked the door. Any true jet would have unlocked it and let me in when I knocked. I'm, I'm dreadfully sorry about that young fella. But you see, I was away with the fairies and I didn't hear you at all. That's a lie. I saw you through the glass. You were talking to someone. Okay, so then maybe my theory is just all out the window. These two didn't kill Mason. Now, now, it was a cold night, so it was. People do be seeing things that aren't real in the cold. It's hardly surprising. Saying things, saying things! I believe we have reached an impasse here on this particular point. Uh, you, you, you! Don't take it personally now, lad. If I'm a suspect in this case, then it's only fair that you and the other fiend are too. Open and free competition, what capitalist society is all about. This isn't a competition I should like to be involved in, really. In any case, you think of it, we had no reason to kill him. So, you had never met uh, Mr. Thrice Fired Mason before? Oh, no, no, not once, never. He never met the man before, he said, never. And you, Mr. First, had no prior dealings with the victim either? That's right, sir. Hatters don't have much to do with brickmakers, to be perfectly honest, sir. No, I imagine not. You see, how many different ways could I put this? Oh, sat there, sat there. None of us have the remotest connection to the gentlemen who were inside the cabin. Mr. McGilded? Yes, Counsel, what could I be doing for you? Did the witness's last statement give you pause for thought somehow? Not the remotest connection. Is that right now, I wonder? What are you insinuating now? Ah, Mr. Fairplay, it has been too long, so it has. Eh? If I'm not very much mistaken, I believe it is fast approaching, is it not? Your repayment date. I am starting to give him an English accent, and I don't know how to do an Irish accent. I love this theme. I- it's weird. I- I beg your pardon? Hey, <laughs> you borrowed tiny giddies from me, sir. At an, an unconscionable rate of interest. You tricked me. It's, it's extortion. Well now, is that a touch of begrudgery, is it? The sort of begrudgery that might motivate a fella to pass his crimes off on another. Arr! And young Mr. First. Me, sir? What do you want with me, sir? You do be making hats for a living, do you not? Uh, that there top hat sliding about on your head. Is that one of your own creations, is it? Oh, well, um, I'm, I'm still just an apprentice, you understand. I'm learning to find the perfect fit for whatever fine jet walks through the door. Hehehe, <laughs> the perfect fit, is it? Well, it is a very distinctive design, so it is. Many customers like it, I tell you. Do you like a distinctive touch? Customers, such as thrice fired Mason? Oh! There was photographic print of the victim submitted as evidence of form, Lord. Hmm? Oh, uh, this, you mean? I can't help thinking that the poor fellow's hat looks distinctly for. Well, I was right! First made his hat? Distinctly familiar, wouldn't you say? Um. Oh! That's. That's one of my hats! Hehe. <laughs> Aye, then it is. So it seemed the brickmaker was a customer of yours. This 
not a customer, I wager, you could have a wee quarrel with over the distinctiveness of your goods. Oh no, sir, a absolutely not, sir. Well, there's a really nothing more to add. It won't be right to say that the two fellas here have the remotest connection to the victim, you see. I rest my case. You, you weasel! Arr! He's better at this than I am. Gosh, Mr. McGilded has certainly been through in thorough in his research, hasn't he? Please, don't- Huh? Hat Hunter? How? Please, don't let me inter a little interruption hold the proceedings. The sky that was shut the entire time I told you good pressure when you opened it. Are you quite certain about that? That the skylight was shut the entire time? I'm going to lose my block with you in a minute. He's going to lose his track with you in a minute. That's what he said. Take a look for yourself. Go on. You see, it shut fast now, just like it was on the night. Because you could have opened it, dumped the body, and closed it before the police came. Hello? So it is. Of course, a fellow the size of Mr. Mason could likely break right through it, still and all. What? Just looking at the size of the thing, you understand. Uh, now you hold on there a minute, sir. The size of the thing means nothing. Not on its own. Let's consider the bigger picture here, shall we? Let's stop biting our cane, shall we? Um, I... I was riding the omnibus on another occasion when, um... Well, I broke wind. Loudly. I, I shot myself with it, as it happens. And what? This is an unexpected confession, Mr. First. Oh, I, I just mean to say, well, the point is, I tried to open the skylight, you see. But, just my luck, I couldn't make a budge. The stench was terrible. Everyone was looking daggers at me, sir. I want as red as rouge, I did. Are you expecting me to sentence you? Oh, no, sir. The, the point is, the skylight can't be opened. I tried and tried when I was inside the cabin of the shame. That cabin of shame. Um, but that- you were inside, you could've opened it from the outside, though! Do you have something to say about that, Miss Lestrade? Miss Lestrade! It opens. Hmm? The skylight. That's what we're talking about, right? Excessive. All them skylights open. Dead easy. More easily than you can load that weapon? That's a lie, I tell you! Otherwise, when I broke wind, I... I... Can't do it from the inside, you mug. Oh! Look, a few weeks ago, I was up on the roof deck of one of them drags. And I had a great all. I mean, I had purses coming out of my ears. Miss Lestrade, this is not the forum to be eulogizing on the subject of your criminal activities. Well, anyway, I had a bit of a scare. When I lifted the last bloke's purse, he got worse to me. All four of them surrounded me, so I, could, I couldn't up the bus and leg it. So what I did was, I used skylight, open catch, and jump right through. What? Yeah, the catch from the skylight is on the top side. That's why you can't open from the cabin. The skylight opens from the roof deck. Bailiff, climb up on the roof of the omnibus at once and verify this witness's claims. Who is she? Her name is Gina Lestrade. And if I remember correctly, Lestrade is the name of the detective from the Sherlock Holmes series. Virtual hug, thank you! Oh, my heart. Oh, it's first. Oh, my heart! See? Order! Order! So, it appears that the street girl's statement is quite true. I don't believe it. The skylight opens. I from the roof deck. It's another photo. Oh my gosh, Kirby, thank you for all the virtual hugs. Pasta check. Go exercise. Oh, I will. I took a walk today. See, I'm getting healthy. This could be the clue we've been looking for. Well, counsel for the defense, please continue with your cross-examination. Yes, my lord. 
So, the skylight opens. Perhaps I should investigate for myself. He said investigate. Examine again. Now I think we could examine this again. So the skylight was fastened shut before. Now the catch has been undone, we should be able to open it. And if we look directly down, what do we see? The blood. You can certainly see inside the carriage through this opening, that's for sure. Uh, oh, well, okay, so now I'm supposed to go inside and then look up. Now that I know who she is, why is she here? Because she was found um, inside the carriage. Because the gilded was like, there was someone else in there. It was a little girl, and then we found her. So now if I look up... I can't find anything out of place. What do you mean you can't find anything out of place? I just opened this. Can't find anything out of place. So then maybe the blood makes more sense now? That's blood, isn't it? Something wrong, it's just, well, blood stain so obvious, made no mis mention of it. Why do I have such bad feel? Am I not supposed to- BLOOD! Damn it, okay. Yes, it doesn't- it does open very wide, doesn't it? Wide enough to kick someone through- uh, someone like you through, certainly, Mr. Narahodo. Why someone like me? Ah! What is it? Look, just here, look at this! That's... without question. It's blood! Wow, there be a blood stain there! Surely... It can't be unrelated to the case, can it? The details of the omnibus has been updated in the court record! Whee! And if this is the front, then that means this blood is in the back. Okay. She was inside the carriage. Yeah, she was hiding under the seat. Very subtle, Jelly. Ugh. I got it, I got it. Uh, if you're- oh, wait! Oh, I presented right here! ba -boom. Make Jelly say wee! On the night in question, the victim was fatally stabbed in the stomach. And immediately afterwards, the victim's body was pushed through the skylight into the cabin below. Those are the facts, and the irrefutable proof remains clearly visible in the omnibus that stands before us today in this very courtroom. What? That's- that's utter humbug! Arr, you can't possibly have any evidence! No, you can't! I- I mean, we didn't do it, I tell you! It's impossible! Irrefutable proof, here in this courtroom! Counsel? My lord! I believe everyone would appreciate a little- appreciate a little clarification here, hmm? Where exactly within the omnibus is this evidence to which you allude? Huh, could it possibly be the new piece of information that we found out? You'll point out what it is to prove the victim fell from the roof deck to the skylight. The blood! Oh, what? Oh, it has to be highlighted like that, okay. By Jupiter, is, is that blood? Arrgh. This blood stain proves two things. Firstly, when the incident occurred, the skylight of the omnibus was open. What? And secondly, the victim was already bleeding when he fell through the opening. Oh my! And so it follows that Mr. McGilded, who was inside the enclosed cabin himself at the time, cannot possibly be guilty of this crime. Mm. <laughs> But, 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 but the blood could have sprayed up there when the, <laughs> when the fellow was stabbed inside the cabin. And only found its way to that one particular spot on the skylight? Sure, and that would be very convenient. Ugh. And let's keep in mind that the skylight catch can only be unfastened from the roof deck. I myself wouldn't have been able to open it now, would I? There's no way to tell for certain, is there? If the jet really fell through the skylight, I mean. Why don't you have a good look at the Florida cabin between the two seats, Mr. First? It is all too plain, if you see. There's the aftermath that shows the poor fellow dropped from a fair height right there, so it is. What? No! But, 
but it can't be. It's it's all. Nice. My fellow jury members, I think we can all agree that this is clear proof of the defendant's innocence, can't we? I believe you can, yes, sir. It's clear to me now where the filthy rubbish can be found in this courtroom. So, they thought they could pull the wool over my eyes, did they? I won't tolerate any of the girls' carriages being sodded with blood. I won't tolerate it. Oh, I always knew the nice gentleman who gave us that delightful park couldn't have done such a thing. On three then, everyone. One, two, three. Idiotic. Shut up! I... I just proved it! A chilling performance, Mr. McGilded. You are bringing your personal bias into this. You shouldn't be the prosecutor for this case because you have personal bias. Oh, and what will you be referring to there now, Lord Van Zietz? A blood stain on the frame of the skylights. Such evidence is null and void. What? Why? For one extremely simple reason. That smear of blood never existed. What? What are you talking about? It's there for all to see, and it's clearly blood. I personally attended Scotland Yard's investigation of the omnibus. The officers involved went over the carriage with a fine tooth comb. So I can state with absolute surety. No such smear of blood existed in the carriage. At least not until this trial began. But, are, are you suggesting, Lord Van Zeeks, that this stain of blood was... Fabricated, my lord? Yes, and while well, this court has been in session. What? If only I knew about the skylight earlier, I did not think to examine it. <laughs> what a palaver. I must say I didn't expect such crude reason from a prosecutor of your standing, Lord Van Zeeks. I'm Magnus McGilded, a fellow known all over the capital for his fine contributions to public life. I don't take kindly to slander, and I'll fight it to the bitter end. Even if it's rolling off the tongue of the Reaper of the Bailey. Mr. McGilded, I realize that this is your first appearance in court as the accused. However, I am well aware of your involvement behind the scenes in a great many affairs of dubious nature. I think Van Zeeks is trying to like get McGilded so that he could be like, hey, there's some actually other shady stuff that I want to, like, use you for because there's, like, a bigger thing behind the scenes. But still, you shouldn't be doing this in this trial! Ugh. You're very adept when it comes to avoiding getting your own hands dirty. And each time it happens that uh, the case you're involved in is investigated, you adapt the facts. Adapt the facts? What's that even mean? When you build a fortune the size of Mr. McGilded's, however, ill-gotten it may be, nothing is impossible. Tampering with- Oh, now I know why might there be an echo in my mic because it's on the wrong setting. I'll fix it later. Tampering with evidence, manipulating the scene of a crime, bribing witnesses. I toast your ability to concoct the most convenient of stories, sir. Then that- does that mean that Gina and McGilded aren't strangers? That they're actually, like, partners and he gives money to her? And so they stage this whole thing? Oh, Hearing more jelly isn't a bad thing. Oh, thank you, Kirby. Tut tut, Lord Van Zeeks. This will not do, to be sure. Will it now? Wait, will it now, Council? Hmm? Oh, no. I think it's fair to say, this does all sound like a rather far-fetched excuse by a desperate man. The blood of the skylight didn't exist, you say. But if you will all cast your minds back, it's not true that the omnibus there has been in the courtroom the entire time. How could anyone possibly have put a smear of blood in it without the world and his wife seeing? The smokescreen. The little intermission. Isn't that right now, Council? It's true, the omnibus has been in full view of the entire time that court has been in session. My learned friend. Here 
curious to hear your opinion on this matter, in your own words. As you wish. Could someone have tampered with the Omnibus during this trial? If you're asking me, I think it could have been possible. This song that's playing kind of sounds like a Kingdom Hearts song. As a defense lawyer, it's my job to advocate for the defendant as best as, best as I can. But still, I feel as though there's something even more important at stake here. There's no evidence to suggest that the defendant did as my learned friend suggests. However, in terms of having the op opportunity to carry out the alleged tampering, there is one possibility. Oh, good gracious. Explain yourself, counsel. Yes, there is. It seems my learned Nipponese friend has no intention of running from this deceit. Deceit? I'm sure everyone still remembers clearly. The recess that we were forced to take. As a result of the smoke grenade fired by the witness currently in the stand, Miss Gina Lestrade. Bang! What's going on? Be careful, Mr. Naruto, cover your face. Be left, don't let the accused escape. Excuse me, me boss. I have a client, back to some recess. Be your life, enjoy the defendant's custody, clear the courtroom. The courtroom was filled with smoke and everyone was thrown into confusion. All of us were made to leave this chamber. In that brief interval, under the veil of smoke and in all the chaos, it could have been possible to steal inside the omnibus. Mata! <laughs> are you wise? What are you trying to pull, ye, you rotten, feckless gouger? Feckless gouger? You're supposed to be defending me! Tis a wicked plot! Tis a plot to undermine me, so it is! Whatever you think this is, it changes nothing. The facts are the same. After this courtroom was evacuated early as a result of the smoke grenade, a number of inconsistencies materialized in relation to the omnibus. Inconsistencies such as... To start with the storage compartment underneath the rear passenger seat. When the police investigated the omnibus, this compartment was... Was there blood on the floor of the carriage initially? Because when I when I examine the blood on the floor now, Yunosuke is like, why didn't Van Zeeks point this out earlier? No, the blood wasn't there. Oh my gosh, because I was even- oh. I was even like, whoa, in the photograph, like, there wasn't a lot of blood. Because they never removed the knife, which means the blood had no opportunity to spill out anywhere. When the police investigated the omnibus, this compartment was full of the driver's items. Secondly, we have the smear of blood on the edge of the skylight. As I have said, there was, that was not present at the start of the trial this morning. Hmm, unfortunately, Lord Van Zeeks, no one is able to corroborate your claims. That's true. When the omnibus was first wheeled out, both the storage compartment and the skylight were shut. I examined the storage compartment! Are you crazy? Accordingly, I'm afraid to say we cannot establish with any certainty if this evidence is a result of tampering or not. Indeed, my lord, no doubt there was not a single person who saw fit to verify such things. What do you think? Sorry? About the omnibus. Is there anything else unusual about the omnibus? The blood on the floor? My lord. Yes, counsel. Oh, well, that's a judge. Yes, counsel. There's one further inconsistency. A mark that surely could not have been present at the start of the trial. What? What in the devil's name are you going to say now? If, if you dare to betray me. Oh, we can read that. Silence, McGilded. The court awaits the defense's clarification. So does that mean McGilded really is guilty? I'm defending a guilty man? For the first time ever? Second time ever? This trial keeps swinging one way and then the other. I have no idea what's the truth and what's deception. What am I supposed to believe here? The truth? I shall have to ask you to collaborate, counsel. 
elaborate, counsel. Where exactly is this alleged mark that you claim to have appeared at some point in the trial? Right, because if even if you look at the yeah, the blood color is different too. That's a darker red. So this. If we consider that the victim fell through the skylight onto the floor of the cabin, you would certainly expect to find signs of blood where he landed. But as far as far as I recall, this blood stain on the cabin floor was not there when the omnibus was first brought into the courtroom. Good lord. Yes, I do believe you're correct, counsel. Well said. Although, as advocate for the defense, one might say that there was very clearly slip of the tongue. I just want the truth, man. I believe that blood stain on the floor is a decisive piece of evidence. But if the question is whether that evidence is genuine or whether it is unlawfully fabricated by someone, I feel compelled to admit that there's at least a possibility that the evidence is fake. So someone's gonna go crazy now and then spill the whole truth and then this trial will be over. Arr! Yep, here he goes. This trial is over. Mr. McGilded? I've done everything I possibly can to cooperate with the court, but it's all over now. But, but you're the defendants. It is over, I tell ya. That's gotta hurt, he has rings on. Memory, recollection, what people think they saw, this is all nonsense. Facts are what counts, and the fact is that Bloodspain is dead now. Ah, uh, well... And over the course of this desperate trial, long and extremely drawn out as it has been, the Gifford and Reaper the Bailey has failed to present any decisive evidence at all. That's true, you also do not have clear decisive evidence that it was McGilded. I'm scandalized, so I am. I thought better of Lord Van Zeeks. Well, my lord? I must concur with the defendant. The unaffirmed recollections of an individual cannot stand as evidence. At this moment in time, the particular bloodstain in question is very much in existence. And in the absence of any credible method by which to prove its alleged previous non-existence, I regret to say that it would be improper for this trial to continue. Your, your lordship can't be serious. Lord Van Zeeks, what is your position? The prosecution, my lord. Has no further witnesses or evidence to present. Since when has prosecution ever needed evidence in the Ace Attorney series? You're right, they don't. And here it's guilty until proven innocent, which sucks. Very well. In that case, as I believe we have explored every possible avenue in this matter, I shall proceed to my adjudication. As a formality, I am of course obliged to confirm with the defense first. What formality? As things stand at the moment, it would seem that Mr. McGilded will be found not guilty. Yes. Which would mean we've won. Is that really the right outcome here? Is it really all right for the trial to come to an end now with all these unexplained inconsistencies? Of course not. Counsel for the defense, your closing statement, please. Yes, my lord. The defense believes... Oh my gosh, he could be guilty! He could be guilty! Uh, but I need to figure out the truth. I want to know the full truth. I'm here in this courtroom today to advocate for the defense of my client, Mr. McGillard. However... At this moment in time, I cannot in all good conscience attest fully to the defendant's innocence. What are you saying, man? Without any question, there is no conclusive evidence to prove that the defendant is guilty. However, there's- Oh, I missed it! There is also no conclusive evidence to prove that he is innocent. Good- Good gracious me! Yeti! <laughs> Order! Order! This this is unprecedented behavior, counsel. A defense lawyer, calling the accused innocence into question. Are you out of mind? <laughs> oh, 
it was a grand decision to appoint you as my lawyer. So it was a grand decision. What? I must say, I didn't expect quite such an exciting spectacle at the end there, but still. Here, have this for your troubles. Uh, your job here is done, fella. And some fine work you've done, so you have. What do you mean? This just as right honorable gentleman so succinctly put it afore. The travel can't go on anymore. And your closing statement there was, how do you put it now? Nothing more than a formality. Oh my gosh, you're guilty. You did kill him. Wah! Ah, 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 ah. Huh! Oh, thank you for the bit, Kirby! How's this for your troubles? Thank you! I, I really don't know what to make of this. Was the evidence we've seen genuine, or was it fake? His lordship would be fuming. Any insightless robber should be disposed of promptly, as I said. The stick and bridge are always guilty of something. You mock my words. I feel terribly ashamed that I ever doubted that lovely man who gave us a lovely park. Now the proceedings have unfolded in this way. I am compelled to declare a premature end to this trial. Furthermore, the court must accept the defendant's plea. Wait, that's it? That's really it? Nothing? What? I thank you kindly, my lord. I hereby pronounce the verdict of this court. But, but we still haven't determined if the bloodstain in the omnibus is genuine or not. We don't know if these witnesses are telling the truth or a pack of lies. We have no idea about the truth. Lord Van Zix. My lord. The case made by the prosecution was flawed, plain and simple. If indeed the omnibus presented as evidence was tampered with, the prosecution is as is at fault for allowing such a disgraceful perversion of justice to take place. The smoke bomb was not planned by the prosecution, but okay. My sincerest apologies, my lord. Or, can if it was examined by Scotland Yard, then don't they have like a document saying like, hey, here's a condition of everything? Or like, yeah, take photos. I, I don't know. But, wait. When we were evacuated from the courtroom, Lord Van Zeeks ordered the evidence to be secured. I'm afraid the prosecution cannot show responsibility in this matter. That's so unfair. The culpability of the defendant has not, at the present time, been established by this court. Consequently, the jury will not be required to proffer judgment. What? Well, Lord Van Zeeks, it's been a pleasure, so it has. And as for you, my dear fella, I could have asked for a better defense. Do you mean to tell me this has all been a grand waste of time? There's a lot to land, my good man. If you'd like to pursue this matter further, you can always go ahead and try to change the law. Magnus McGild- ooh. Magnus- Magnus McGilded. Good grief, you have more to say to me, have you? Just one thing. A warning. This is far from over. Well, something to be looking forward to then. <laughs> he is guilty. He's guilty. Why did they evacuate the courtroom? Yeah, smoke bomb went off. I hereby pronounce the defendant, Mr. Magnus McGilded. Not guilty. Oh. Fireworks inside a building that's not safe. And then the whole building goes up in flames. Not a feels good ending. Not. I can't believe it. This is an outrage. You should examine the evidence more. What are you talking about? The bomb's been clear. Here's innocent. Shoot, I defended a guilty guy. With the courtroom in pandemonium for the second time that day, the judge delivered his verdict, and my first ever trial in Great Britain came to an abrupt end. 
with the defendant being found gu not guilty, ostensibly a victory for us. <sighs> that certainly was a long trial. Ah, uh, yes, it was. Your first ever trial on foreign soil, and your first victory. It was a wonderful performance. My heartfelt congratulations. And to you, Mr. Sato. Thank you for your assistance. I suppose we should be happy. The trouble is, we're still completely in the dark about what actually happened. Well, we didn't have enough time. But isn't it wrong? I mean, who was actually responsible for Mr. Mason's death? We don't even know that. The sole aim of the defense is to obtain a verdict that exonerates the defendant. You carried out your duty to perfection. I that you did. Oh my gosh, is he going to come to threaten me now? Mr. McGilded. Ah, oh, that girl's with him too. Well, it seems the stories are true. Oh, what stories? About the six enormous fireworks, they do be letting off when there's a verdict of not guilty. I'm sure you must have seen them now. Spectacular, wouldn't you say? Yes, definitely. I heard it was a sight to behold, and to be sure it was. And I viewed a tank, I suppose, for having an opportunity to see it. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I'm not sure I really did anything. What on earth are you saying, fella? How did I walk out of there free man then? I don't think it was so much thanks to me as down to your planning. You're a straight talking fella, aren't you? I must say, you have me astray in the head there once or twice. But you're strong and headstrong. You're young and headstrong. Wahahaha! Ah, tis water under the bridge. Congratulations, Mr. McGilded, on having your name cleared. But nothing's resolved. There's only one thing that matters to me. Oh? Hi. They've all seen that I didn't do that odious and abs absonant deed? Absonant. Whoops. Tis grand, is it not? I suppose it is. Now the fine fellows of Scotland Yard can take matters in hand and sort out any wee details. They'll see it for what it is. They'll get to the truth. I have absolute faith in them, so I have, after all. I do people find in a good number of their wages with all the taxes I pay. Ha 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 It's not that funny. So then, as we agreed aforehand, 1,000 guineas for your troubles, fella. Oh, no, no, I couldn't possibly accept that much. Ah, you be west. You're a humble people, are you, you from the east? Well, if you insist. But have this, still and all, you deserve a reward. Mr. Magnus McGilded! Everything is ready, sir. If you'd like to follow me into the courtroom... Into the courtroom? What's this, officer? Tis sooner than I was led to believe. Hope it's not inconvenient, sir. There were some changes to the schedule. Well, I must be making tracks now. It's time for the inspection. Sorry? What inspection? They're going to examine the omnibus again, so I'm told. They asked if I could be present for it, myself. They're going to examine it again? Now? Naturally, I'm under no obligation to take part in any more of this matter now. But as an upstanding member of London society, I do... I do be doing my best to help where I can. It's a gentleman's duty, so it is. So then, fare thee well. It was an absolute pleasure meeting you. I hope you have a whale of a time while you're starting here in Great Britain. And there he goes, a free man. You, why are you still here? Oh, I forgot she was here too. Yeah, yeah, get it over with, please. Don't move. Whereas I want to say, whereas I want to say, get a move on. She really does take forever to load that thing. Mrs. Strahd, would you mind putting that thing down? You're a grown up. Sorry. And I ate all grown ups. Ah, 
Ah, there you are. Oh, a girl. Naughty, naughty, fretting off like that. Is this some kind of picnic? Who's this little girl now? I'm taking that with you as well. I was looking forward to the trial in front of my experimental smoke grenade launcher. Ha! Uh. Oh, do you want to play? You won't beat me! <sighs> um, excuse me, but who are you? How'd you get in here? Oh, good day to you. I'm, well, the inventor, I suppose, of that machine. The inventor? Well, no more smoke grenades are so dull, don't you agree? White, white, and more white. If you have to be shrouded in smoke, it could at least be a pretty color, I thought to myself. <laughs> Do we have to be shrouded in smoke, though? At all? I just took my eyes, my eyes off her for a moment while I was, whilst I was changing into a different omnibus, and she pinched it. Luckily, I fitted it with a telegraphic beacon. A tele what's it what? I have no idea what this girl was talking about. Uh, but have his cat. Thank you for the cat. Uh, why did a smoke bomb go off? Gina fired it. As for why, it hasn't been explained. Yep, not yet. Anyway, you're coming with me now. Back to my laboratory. Laboratory. What? What for? To apologize, of course, silly. To my technician. What? You mean say sorry? You must say sorry when you've done something wrong. Surely, as an, an adult has told you that before. An adult? Huh. I don't listen to no adults. Come along then, follow me. Fine, have it your way. Oh good, you see, I knew you'd want to do the right thing in the end. I'm fairly sure that what she wants is not, not to get shot by that massive gun of yours. We'll be leaving now then, bye bye! I'm so sorry for all the fuss. So she stole that gun from that little girl. Awesome. She was a lively one. Well, do you think perhaps we ought to be on our way now too? Yes, you're right, but... Where to? Oh! We haven't had time to find a place to stay. No sooner than we had arrived in London than we, ha uh, than we had to rush here. All our traveling cases are still with the bailiff. Hmm... I was originally planning to spend today in search of lodgings. But at this late hour in the day, I'm afraid we may be out of luck. Don't worry though, I have a plan. If worst comes to worst, I've heard of a lovely park where we could spend the night. <laughs> Please tell me you're not thinking of the Gilded Park. I know it may be a little chilly at this time of year, but our youthfulness will see us through. I'm not so sure about that. I think a midwinter London night will freeze a young person solid just as easily as an elderly one. Oh dear, that doesn't sound agreeable. Oh, she's crying. <laughs> now I'm sorry to regret turning Mr. McGilded down. That 1,000 guineas would have paid for a lovely warm room or mansion. Spend the night in bed. Ha ha ha. Your youthfulness will pull you through in bed. Ha 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 ha. And so, the trial to determine my worthiness for the study tour was over by the end of our first day in London. However, as we were soon to learn, there were more trying times ahead. Just as the Reaper of the Bailey had warned, the case was far from over. Oi, what happened? What's going on? Get the fire brigade! Oh, lovely, fantastic. I wonder who could have set it ablaze. Is there someone in there? Is McGilded in there? I didn't notice he had a scar on his forehead. I'm thinking it's McGilded in there, and like someone shoved him in and was like, I'm just gonna get rid of you this way! 
Because you were found not guilty! Oh, snap! Oh, dang! Adventure of the Clouded Kokoro? <laughs> the Clouded Heart. Um, okay, I know if I press A now, it'll just continue on to the fourth case, but I don't want to see the beginning of the fourth case until I actually um, like start the fourth case. And my throat is hurting a lot. Dracula is dead. No, he's not. He's alive. But the trailer is fun. But that's how you get to see it next time on Thursday when I stream again. But for now, I need to um, rest my throat. It is killing me. I need some water. But yay, we finished the third case. It was a little like uh, weird. But I'm pretty sure that like the dealings of this case will like continue on for the rest of the game. So yeah, hopefully by this case, we'll be able to find out like what the truth was behind the whole Mr. Mason death thing. Thank you, posture check and thank you for the hugs. But yeah, that's it for me tonight. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye.